Anthony Hartwig here with the Western Reserve Coach's Corner on the volleyball court with Chrissy Hughes, the head coach of the Blue Devils. Chrissy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having me. All right. It is officially the end of the regular season and start of tournament time in Western Reserve. When we had you on back at the beginning, you kind of laid out some of your expectations and your goals for this team. How did the season compare to kind of what your expectations were and uh, the goals that you set for these players? Um, I believe it went really well. Our goal from the beginning was to play one point at a time, one team at a time, and, you know, just keep on working hard through every single point. We had our ups and downs, as, you know, most do. But I know with my three seniors that I had all playing different positions that are used to playing, um, they really came through. Um, their hard work is paying off. And, again, we are back to play each point for point. <laughs> And now, you know, point for point in tournament time, you've officially received your opponent. Wyndham got the win in the first round, so they'll be heading over to you guys. Uh, how exciting is tournament time and what kind of changes in the atmosphere and, and the feeling around the locker room when tournament time comes around in the calendar? Yeah, I mean, we just talked today at practice. Like, this is it. It's do or die. So we can't wait for, oh, we forgot sorry, my bad. We let that ball drop. So we talk about that a lot throughout um, this whole season. And we talk about effort and attitude. Um, that's kind of our main theme that we've been working on this year. And so we just said it has to be every single point. We, we are going to go down playing our hardest and that's what I want them to do. All right. So you have a lot of players that have done a lot of good things this year. I'm going to give you a chance to kind of highlight all of them in the season they had. I'll start with Olivia Hughes, I think she's the one that everyone circles when they go to play you guys, the one that they want to slow down first of all. So what have you seen from her and, and what has been the, the biggest growth point you think from her this season, the last season? Um, yeah, I feel like that she's uh, positive out there. I think in the last few seasons, just maybe being younger, she would get frustrated, um, frustrated if she couldn't get a hit or if she couldn't get a kill or her pass was off. Um, I don't really see too much frustration out there um, from her, um, you know, more so when maybe when we come home, but um, she's not showing that on the court, you know, even if she doesn't have a good night. Um, so I do believe that she's growing in that atmosphere um, and I'm proud of her for that. She is looked up to, um, you know, people like to go to her and make sure that she's on. So if she is off, um, you know, it is a big struggle and she doesn't want to let anybody down. Lisa Eichert is probably part of that one-two punch that you guys have. Um, what about her, and, and how much pressure does she take off of Olivia to not have to be, you know, getting 20 kills per night? Absolutely. Um, Lisa is one of our captains this year, and I have really seen her grow. I've coached her all the way through since she's been in fourth grade as well. Um, she is such a great leader out there. She is always pulling people up. Um, you know, again, if she's in the front row, Olivia's in the back. If Olivia's in the front row, she's in the back. They both are great diggers. They both are good passers. Um, so I'm really proud of all of them for, um, you know, they, it's, the, it's both of them. Their stats are, you know, one's a little higher than the other just because of maybe certain things. But for the most part, they definitely um, rely on each other. They bring each other up. And um, I don't think either one could do it without the other. Um, how do they differ? Like, how how is defending Lisa Eicher different than defending Olivia Hughes, do you think? Um, uh, Lisa went through some knee injury last year, so I think she changed her game. She changed her game to be smart. Um, she's a very smart volleyball player. She knows the court. She knows the opposite court. Uh, Lisa knows when to tip, when something's open, or when to just flat out hit it hard. Um, so I believe that you know, Lisa looks at that and says, I can tip and I can go to this spot. Olivia does that as well. Um, I think Olivia more, you know, wants to hit that ball hard and go down. Where Lisa in her mature age and, and now she's became a junior and a leader on that court, she um, knows how to be smart and smart with the ball and make sure that it's a score, not always just that hard hit. Or if she's hitting out of bounds, she, uh, you know, she knows try again, but she also knows, Let's be smart. All right. We know that your hitters can't do much if the ball control isn't there. And Allie Jones has played really well as a libero. 
you know, kind of leading that back row. What have you seen from her putting on that different colored jersey and, and being a leader back there uh, in the back line? Yeah. Yes, Allie is a junior as well, and she is so fast. She is so fast. So you think that the ball is going to hit the ground, and she can go dig it up. Um, she gets very frustrated with herself if it's not a perfect pass always. Um, so I definitely have been working with her, making sure she's staying positive, because we definitely need her. We need her in that back row. She covers everyone. If somebody thinks they're not going to go for the ball, she's back there to pick it up in the back row. Or if it's a bad set and somebody oversets it, she's in the front row, too, to cover that. So she is all over the place and um, definitely a key player for us that has um, her hustle. There's no other hustle. All right, you have experience in the setter position, but uh, new new uh, positions for him because you had, a, you had a setter for three years at Western Reserve, and now you have two people that had to kind of step into this new role as a setter. What have you seen from them and their growth throughout the season? Yeah, so Ray Lynn has been a setter for Western Reserve, but she has played, um, you know, mostly on the JV. She's got right. a, a little bit of varsity, but she definitely is hard on herself. She is such a positive person out there. I am really impressed with both of them with being able to play defense because they both have good hands. Um, we probably have a double every game and they know it. They know it. And they've worked so hard on that. They want to not have a double and they want to put the ball where it can go. So I know that they've worked hard. I also have a sophomore setter. She's working hard too. So I am so proud of these girls um, for all the time and effort that they put in because let's face it, that setter out there is a leader because they touch that ball every single time. So they definitely have put the hard work in. Um, Again, I'm really proud of them for getting on the ground and, and digging um, because it's a lot faster in a varsity game. Or for Madison, she's never set. She never set in any level high school game. So she came in with no experience setting at all, and she's definitely stepped up. Um, we talk about it all the time, our passing. We have to get that pass on target because our setters are not as experienced, and it's harder for them when it's a bad pass to make a play out of it, but they are doing an excellent job and they work hard. And again, point for point, forget about a bad set, forget about a bad pass and we have to move on, but they definitely have showed they care um, their work ethics. They work super hard. Someone else we had the chance to talk to early in the season. And I want to highlight is Angelina Capabianca in the middle, making sure that uh, at least some balls don't get through that back line and taking some pressure off your back row with her net presence. What have you seen from her this year? Um, my middles both have worked so hard. They are, um, you know, Angelina is so much enthusiasm and so much energy. She wants to get that block and she'll say, I need to get three blocks this time, or I need to get more. I'm going to get this girl next time. So she has that enthusiasm and that energy to do the best that she can. And she has really come around in that front row blocking. Um, I know even in travel, she played right side. So she played a little bit of middle before just because we need somebody there. And she has stepped up tremendously in the middle, um, not only just with her blocks, but she's also passing better. She's also serving really good for us. And she is hitting, she is hitting hard and she's getting some kills along with being that big block. Daylin. Right. Um, also, she's our other middle, and she actually has the most blocks on our team, but she is a super blocker, and she is aggressive, and, you know, we, we couldn't. It's volleyball. We need all six players out there to win, and I feel like they all are in. They're all in. All right, you guys played in a really tough MVAC, not just Middle Ridge who won it, but Jackson Milton's always scrappy. Western Reserve's in there. McDonald has a great team, a lot of great players on that. What was it like to go through that conference, and how much do you think it has prepared you for this bracket that you find yourself in for a district? I am amazed how much it's prepared us. That first week was tough for us. I thought we might go 0-4. I mean, we had, you know, it was a tough first week for us and we ended up coming out um, three and one. So I was super proud of that. But it's like we talk about every game as a battle. 
every single game we play. We have great competition. I mean, we went five with Jackson. They're so scrappy. They do not let anything fall. So we talk about that all the time with whoever we play. Guys, you have to play for every point. And I know I keep coming back to that, but it's so true with this team this year. You have to fight for every single point. And I tell them, I don't care if it's 24 to 1. We are fighting for every single point. Whether we're the one or we're the 24, it didn't matter. Um, and so this league is is tough. We talk about it amongst coaches in the league as well. Um, you know, hey, who's going to show up tonight? Because we make a ton of mistakes, but that's the game of volleyball. And I believe every team makes those mistakes. So um, we definitely are focusing on every team. It depends who comes to show up to play because anyone could win in our league. We are definitely tough. And I know that has helped us throughout. So we get through these next couple games, which again, will be point for point. Um, all that experience of playing that MVAC was a huge help for us. These next couple games are our tournament time. And I know coaches don't like to look ahead, but I, I just want to know your thoughts on this bracket. Some of the teams that fall into it, it seems like a lot of the higher top 10 seeds didn't really want to deal with Wellsville. So they kind of moseyed on into your brackets. So you have a lot of parity in here, a couple of familiar opponents, a couple of non-familiar opponents. What was your takeaway when you kind of got the bracket in your hand and you got to look at it and see some of the teams that you find yourselves with? Yeah. So uh, I didn't really know too much about Wyndham. I went out and watched them play. So, um, that was a, you know, just an eye opener. I don't want any surprises. I want us to be prepared to look. Um, the lower bracket in our district is um, Lake Center Christian and the Canton South Catholic. Um, I'm definitely going to watch them play on Saturday. Um, if we win tomorrow, um, I think we, you know, I don't know too much about them. I know that they're strong. They end up with a good record. They play some good teams as well. I saw some Division One, Division Two teams that they had went against. So I, I just think it's like a one one game at a time, one point at a time. Um, I, I just believe in that. I believe we need to focus and really make sure that we are fighting point for point. All right. If there was kind of a couple of things that you think you've worked on the most since the, the end of the regular season and practices leading up to this first tournament game, what are some of the things that you think the team and the girls need to improve on the most before they get ready for this tournament run? I know it's hard to say, but I was a little uh, disappointed in our free balls that comes over the net. And I think that we should have a good pass and a good set. And again, because um, where we're at with our team, we need to pass that ball on target. So I think the past week and a half, which, you know, we haven't practiced for a week straight for um, since August, um, we focused on passing, 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 passing. I, you know, that was our main focus for this entire week, whether it's serve, receive, or just free ball passing. So I'm hoping that shows a little bit in the next game, just to make sure that, you know, we are getting that ball on target so we can at least have some targets to hit too. Let's talk about that. The practicing for a week straight, that doesn't happen in volleyball during the regular season. You might be lucky if you get one or two practices in a week. Right. Um, what, is, what kind of advantage is it to just have kind of that week where you can expose all your weaknesses, lay everything out, work on everything you need to work on, and, and be as sharp as possible come tournament time? Yeah, I it is a huge difference because I feel like in practice, I, I know like um, my girls have such a good attitude. And I feel like when we're at practice, we're always working so hard, so hard, so hard. And, you know, there's a couple fun games that we can play that are definitely also helping us but i always think oh gosh i don't know if we have time to play that game so because we had these five practices they're like i, I would let you the jv their last game pick a game what do you want to play so just to get a little bit more of that um calm fun in there which is still working on something so today was their big let's serve with our eyes closed and videotape ourselves so that was our fun game today to relax a little bit during that five minutes of practice so we tried that's been a uh, it's been a volleyball social media trend so they are yeah. definitely joining the cause we did today that was our first one they've been asking me for a couple of weeks <laughs> i broke down to do it <laughs> who did the best who who is the person that did the best at that um actually it was angelina she got it over now here's did they make you do it too? Because I've seen a couple of coaches that they they, they wrangle into yeah, I could do it. Oh, did not even touch it. I had to do it three times because I was so mad. 
I was like, wait, I didn't even touch the ball. So then I did it a couple more times. I think the fourth time my fingers barely touched it. Crazy. All right. All right, Coach, I know you you probably already answered this, but I'm going to ask anyway, what do you think is the key to victory uh, tomorrow in your first tournament again? Um, I just think we need to be consistent, making sure we're doing good passes on serve receive. Sometimes my team doesn't like to communicate as well as they should, so I want us to communicate well. I want us to have good passes. Passes, that's my, that's my goal this week, passes. All right, Coach, congratulations on a great regular season. We wish you the best of luck in tournament time. Uh, we're rooting for you. We, we hope you bring up as many wins as possible. We can't wait to talk to you again real soon. Thank you for all your support. We do appreciate it.